In this video, we are going to look at an example of how we can calculate the return on a leveraged stock position. So let's say an investor buys stock on margin and holds the position for one year. And assume that the interest rate Assume that the interest on the loan and the dividend are both paid at the end of the year. The details of the transactions are as follows. The purchase price is $30 a share and the sale price after one year is $35. With 10,000 shares purchased, the leverage ratio is equals to 4. The call money rate or the borrowing rate on the loan is 6%. The dividend is one twenty a share and the commission is $0.02 cents a share. So calculate the total return on this investment. First, we will start by calculating the total purchase price. So there is a purchase of 10,000 shares for $30 each. So the total purchase price here will be 10,000 shares times $30. So that will be 300,000. So I'll just write 300K here. So how much of this will be financed by debt and how much of this will be financed by the investor's own equity? So to get the investor's equity, we will need to work on the leverage ratio since the initial margin is not given. So the formula here will be to take the initial margin, okay, and this is equals to 1 divided by the leverage ratio. And the leverage ratio here is 4 times, so that's 1 over 4 which is 25%. So in other words, out of this 300,000, 25% will be financed by investors' equity. So we'll take 25% times 300,000. So that's 75,000. So this has to come from the investors' own money. And the rest of it will be on loan. So that will be the 300,000 minus 75,000. So that's 225,000. So this loan here will be, uh, there will be an interest rate on it, which is 6% a year. Okay, we call that the call money rate. Now, there is a commission on the purchase. So the commission on the purchase is $0.02 cents a share. So for 10,000 shares, so that's 10,000 times $0.02 cents a share. So that's $200. Now, the total initial investment today will be the investor's equity, which is 75000 plus the commission of $200, okay, or 0 0.2 thousand. So that will be 75200 So we'll leave it at this point, and then we'll fast forward to one year later, which is the end of the holding period, right? So what do we need to account for? So when the investor sells the share, so the sales proceeds will be 10,000 times, times uh, $35 a share, so that will be 350,000. And then we'll add on the dividends. So dividends will be 120 a share. So 10,000 times 120. So that will be 12,000. Okay, and then uh, we'll minus uh, the loan. Okay, so the loan will be 225,000. So we'll minus that off. So 225,000. And then we'll minus the interest. Interest is 6% times 225,000. So that will be 13,500 and then we'll minus the commission on sales. Okay, so the commission on sales is also 2 cents multiplied by 10,000. So that will be another 200 that we'll minus off. So since you're selling, this is what you receive, then for commission you will have to minus. But uh, when we did it initially, these two are investments, okay? These are outflows, so that's why we have to plus. So lastly, we will just net off the amount here. So if you take the net amount, this is 123,300, okay? So that's your, this is the investor's ending equity, okay? So this is the ending investor's equity. So the investor's equity has increased from 75.2,000 to 123.3 thousand. So what is the return? Okay, what is the return? Return on this investment, okay, which includes the leverage. So that will be equals to the ending equity, 123.3 thousand minus the beginning equity, 75.2 thousand 
then we divide by the initial equity then you multiply by 100% so this will be equals to 63.96% so this is the leverage return on this investment so if we were to invest without using any leverage then what would the return be like so if you're not using any leverage okay so let's call this the unlevered return so the unlevered return will just be the change in price, which is $35 minus $30 plus the dividend of $120. We'll ignore all the commission and the loan interest. Then we divide by the purchase price. So this will be 20.67%. So if you factor in the leverage, which is uh, four times, okay, if you factor in the leverage effect here, this would be about 82.68%, okay, with leverage. But of course, the net return will be lower because of the interest on the loan and also all the commissions if you factor it in. So that's how we calculate the total return on a leverage stock position. A few things to keep in mind is that uh, there will usually be a commission on purchase and commission on sales. So remember, when you factor in commission on purchase, you have to add it to the uh, investor's equity. But at the end, when you factor in the commission on sales, you will have to subtract 